Hello, my name is Shagun. Uh, today we'll be continuing our series in creating an animation, basically making animation. And today we're learning how to use Blender. Blender is an amazing software that you could use in putting out a very good content when it comes to animation, creating, modeling, texturing, rigging, um, and also doing amazing simulation, both fire, smoke, and water simulation. So to get started, I already have Blender in my system because I'm using Blender 2.93 and 3.0. I'm gonna walk you through system requirements, what you need to use Blender. Well, um, for me, what I needed when I started Blender, I basically didn't have a good system. So the system I was using then was basically a Core i2. Yeah, a Core i2 with a four gig RAM. And now, considering where I am today in my journey as a 3D artist, a Core i2 and four gig RAM is considered one of the most lowest specs that your system can have. It's, in fact, your system is kind of like, is running on a low RAM. But nevertheless, Blender is so amazing that Blender accommodates the deficiency of whatever system you're putting out. Like if you're basically going to be doing modeling, um, rigging, and doing a, a bit of animating, Blender would accommodate you even down to um, modeling the clothes, doing a, a, a flat, or should I call it just a basic texture using shaders. Blender would accommodate you and they help you. And I have a lot of project I did when I started as a beginner. Uh, it's gonna pop up on your screen and you see most of the projects I did. These were projects that I considered my first modeled characters that I created. Subsequently, when I got better in Blender and I got a better system, these are basically designs I created now that I'm kind of like very good in Blender. And moving forward, you see other projects I've done on the screen. So the requirements of Blender is basic. You can start with a Core i2, 2 gig, uh, 4 gig RAM. That's if you're like a Windows user. And that's even for Mac, if you have a 4 gig RAM, because Mac tends to work faster and stronger compared to certain things that Windows would do. So I think that's a very good start for you. And you can actually learn Blender with this. Do not feel a bit intimidated when you see other people with stronger system using Blender and so on and so forth. But this basically is like a requirement you can start with. Of course, there are people who have requirements such as uh, having maybe a 10, 1080 Ti NVIDIA graphics card 11 gig, maybe because of the bit tracing or ray tracing they're actually doing on their system or high render qualities on animation. But those are for people who are actually trying to go to the end, testing and stretching the ability of the software on its own. So that's basically about system requirements. What you need basically is just a full functioning system and your mouse. That's all you need to get started in Blender. Now, we're going to go to the next topic. And the next topic has to do basically with installation and user preference of Blender. So the first thing, I'm going to go into my web browser. Okay, this is my web browser. So I'm going to go to, I already have Blender on my system, but I'm going to go to show you how to install Blender. So we're going to go to blender.org. My system just loaded uh, Blender. So this is like the, so the interface of Blender. And it's amazing that Blender is, how would I say, Blender is an open source program whereby you have a lot of programmers and developers who come in and kind of like contribute to the community. And Blender is free. You don't need to pay. Unlike if you're trying to get maybe on Real Engine, Unity, Cinema 4D, or you're trying to get Maya. These are like 
some some of the like cinema 4d is free but softwares like maya some of them tend to ask you to pay to use the full feature and the beautiful thing about blender is that blender maximum folder i think it's like let's try and download blender 2.93 so we have it here so once you want to download it you could see how the ins we have the blender folder on its own and the blender installer like i hover my mouse this is the blender installer and this is what you need now if you paid attention to my last um lesson you would discover i talked about how big the size of blender now you could see that blender is just 183 mb now that's very small compared to maya maya is like four gig you can imagine and cinema 4d is like 350 to 400 mb the software on its own now look at what blender is giving you and this is like a recent kind of like a recent software which is blender 2.931 and this is 183 MB. That's to show you Blender doesn't take too much of your maybe GPU or your CPU power. Because these are things you need to understand when you are starting up in a 3D. A 3D software basically uses two things, which I will get straight to that once we try and install Blender. So we're going to download Blender. For me, I'm not going to download it because I already have it installed on my system. So I'm just going to show you. First thing you do, Windows user, you click this button here. You click the button here, this button. Immediately, it starts downloading. It's going to show you that it's going to download. Now, you see this, it comes up now. This is like the installer version, not the uh, folder version. So once you're okay with it, just click save and you have it on your system, but I'm not going to do that because I already have Blender on my system. And if you are a Mac user, for a Mac user, you just come under this um, icon here where you have Mac OS and you take Mac. So you take like Mac Intel or Mac Apple Silicon. Either will work for you depending on your system. I'm not using Mac, I'm using a Windows. So you just click this and you install it. Now, once you've installed that, blender will be ready to run now the next thing we're going to go i'm going to open my blender here let me just open the new version now once you open blender this is the first thing you'll be greeted with that's the blender interface on its own and from here um basically there's nothing much you can do but mine is different because i've done something on my system unlike yours you would have something like left or right so that's basically installing blender you don't want that now this is the blender interface on the blender interface what you would always see on the blender interface is you would see a cube there's a cube you will see here um camera and over here you have a light now these are the three components you're going to see on the blender interface once you've installed it now uh, we're going to move to user preference and user interface now so go to user preference what you need to do just click on the edit and you see you go once you go edit click on edit and you go to the last uh, option on the list and the last option here says preference and you click preference now we're in the user preference interface now in the user preference let me just enlarge it so you could see it better now this is the user interface pre um, uh, this is the user interface of blender now first thing normally what you would see like I've, i had mine customized already in the way i want it to go now i'm going to explain it one after the other the user interface now basically i do not touch anything on the interface here the first one here the interface that has a resolution um the scale line width i don't normally mess with that then this is actually the theme I think the theme is basically where you change how you want your desktop of your blender to display and so other other user interface on it i don't normally do anything i like just leaving it on the default now we're going to go to viewport now on the viewport viewport is preferentially a lot of people like to do some few things on their viewports maybe like a 3d axis they want to change it their hdri preview but I don't also touch it. Lights, 
I don't touch that also. I just use the presets that comes with lights, matte caps and everything. Editing. Now, this editing interface, I don't touch it also, but it's basically created like for you if you want to change everything that has to do with what you want to see on your Blender interface. If you want to just change it, you want to, maybe you don't want your surface or your uh, lights probe or your armature, you, you don't want to see it, you can disable it but i'm not disabling anything the next one on the list is animation i don't touch animation but where i normally um put my how like call it where i normally do something or want to change something the way i want is i want to enable certain things is my add-ons and it's right here now if you come under the add-ons um i always advise people sometimes click the 3d navigation it's is good yeah the 3d measure it and you're going to see what they do basically um what else what else what else like i like to make sure now okay let me put it this way under the 3d if you know the name of whatever add-on you want to enable it's a matter of you just typing it in into the search bar and the add-on is going to hit you up with a lot of option of what you're looking for now let's for example, admit. Uh, for example, let's admit I want to enable my Node Wrangler. Now, Node Wrangler basically is for professionals who want to like connect their nodes and they want to bring textures from um, a third-party plugin to come and use in Blender. Now, if I want a Node Wrangler, what I just need to do is just type Node, and immediately it gives me option of nodes. Now immediately, this is my Node Wrangler. You can see that my Node Wrangler is not enabled. So what I do, I just enable it, tick it once, and you see this kind of like eye head icon comes up. That shows that it's enabled. So you can also go and enable your Rigify, which is very good for rigging. I already have that um, enabled, my Rigify. So there's no need for that. Um, what else? I think for now, that's everything you need to um, enable in your add-ons. So you can also come under input. Now, this is this part is very, very important. A lot of people will want to like emulate their 3D mouse button. Now, if you want to emulate your 3D mouse button, all you need to do is just emulate 3D mouse button right here. But I left that, I didn't take it. By default, Blender over here, emulate non-pad comes like this so you need to en enable the emulate non-pad that means you could change your view from a front view to a side view using your number keys on your keyboard and i'm going to show you how that works once you're done with that the next thing you could go to navigation bar now under the navigation bar a lot of people like to use their trackball so actually orbit around the blender interface but i don't do that i leave it on a turntable i don't just let it come by default on the turntable then once you've done that i don't think there's anything you need to do or you could if you want to like for example make your um 3d just zoom to mouse position just enable your zoom to mouse position over here the next thing you could do is key on the key map on the key map what you could do, like a lot of people, for me as a person, I love to always select with my right click. I don't like selecting with a left click. But if you're kind of like you prefer the left click selection, it's quite easy. Just enable your left click over here. But for me, I like using right click to select. Then once you've done that, I think that's about all system. If you have it actually under system, if you have a graphics card, you could enable that on your CUDA. Over here, you have a CUDA graphics card. Now mine is already enabled. You can see it here. GeForce GTX 80, 880MM. I already have that enabled. So in case you want to enable your Intel Core i7, which is your internal graphics card, it's right here you could also just enable that um apart from that and that's all so once you've done that what you need to do you need to save all the setting you've made so what you just do you just say save come over here 
come over here just save it once you've saved it that means it's saved so you can minimize that means your user preference okay sorry sorry a little bit of mistake you don't save it here you don't click here what you do is you come under here this kind of like icon bar here you click it and you say save preference so once you save preference i think that's all for blender then you can close if you do not press the save preference whatever you've done whatever adjustments you've made to your user inter user preference is never going to take effect so basically you need to save the user preference once you're done so that's everything we're going to be doing on installation and user preference i'll be coming back in the next class to start up the next topic on our list which has to do with interface walkthrough that is where i'll be showing you how to move around and navigate on the blender software thank you